Hi, my name's Clinton. I'm your average modeler and this is Layla Central. Now on my last video, we talked about and showed you one of my recent purchases, this little packet, which was quite good. Now, some people commented on, uh, you know, saying that was quite good, but that wasn't monthly mailbox. Oh, goodness, no. This is monthly mailbox. G'day guys, my name's Clinton. And welcome back to Layla Central. Uh, it's been a bit of a bit of a while since I've uh, done another video. Um, lately, since my last video, of course, I'm still struggling to get any time whatsoever into the actual shit here and doing some modelling, doing some work essentially on the layer. But one thing that doesn't change though is monthly mailbox. Now, as you can see here, we've got quite a few packages this month. So, and obviously, as I mentioned in my last video, where I did an unboxing of this wonderful little packet. Um, I'm a big fan of this. I absolutely love it. Uh, that wasn't monthly mailbox though. Uh, that was a little bit of uh, essentially birthday gift sharing with you guys. Um, so this here is the boxes and what I've actually got. And some of this has been bought with some birthday money as well. Um, so I think what we need to do is we need to open and uh, see what's inside. So to those that are first new to the channel, uh, Welcome to the channel guys. Um, for those that don't know me, my name's Clinton uh, and thanks for joining me and also visiting my channel. Here in Monthly Mailbox what I do is I go through essentially some of my little purchases that I've purchased uh, for the month. Now, agreed, this isn't quite little, <laughs> but um, you know anything that I purchase for the month, I'll unbox, share it with you guys, go through a little review, nothing uh, super formal like some other channels do, but to essentially share that with you guys as well. Now one of the things uh, that I've noticed on here, which uh, I'll move that to a side, but I thought was quite funny, is the description that some of these uh, people put on their boxes. So as you have a look here, now hopefully the camera will focus, the description of the products here. Now, I don't know if you can read that, but it actually says model modeling toys. So uh, I think as we hear the word uh, toys, uh, and trains, uh, some of us can get a little bit defensive about it, but uh, that I had a bit of a giggle over. So anyway, this box here I've already opened uh, and we're going to actually open and take a look what's actually in here. Now, uh, everything that's in here, uh, as well, both the boxes, have all been things that I've been after for quite some time. So slowly crossing off that to buy, to buy list. So the first thing I've got here is a new locomotive by Hornby. And this essentially is the D16 in late BR. And it's weathered as well, so a very nice uh, locomotive. So we'll get that out and have a closer look. The other thing I've got, uh, for those that have been following Monthly Mailbox, you know I'm a big fan of these uh, things. So essentially I've got a, a nice big selection of uh, wagons from Oxford Rail. Now I went through one of their other, um, I guess a, supposed to be a pack. Um, this video is essentially, oh not video, this uh, pack here is essentially uh, five wagons in a pack, um, which are the same. Now these are essentially just the Lemington Priors Gas Company, which you'll see there. So we'll get a look at those. Five of those came in the pack, so they come a bit cheaper buying them in the pack like this than individually. Um, one thing I've been needing has been a nice new brake van as well. With all the trains are producing running short of brake vans. And uh, just another, another seven plank wagon. Uh, as well, so all that's are essentially going to really add to my coal train uh, that I've been working on over time. So this, uh, now this other thing here uh, in this box is something else that I've been uh, quite keen to get. And uh, going back a, a little bit of a while ago, I had a monthly mailbox where I actually got a uh, Helgen uh, diesel second hand, which I thought was fantastic. It was a great buy. It was like new, and it was essentially a new product with such a uh, cheaper price. I've done something similar here. It's not a diesel though, but I have bought something secondhand that was under the description of like new. And what we got here is a Call It Goods by Buckman. So this uh, this to me is going to look very good. So as you can see here, two locomotives. Uh, it's been quite a, uh, a month in our box. So I think what we'll do is we'll get these boxes open and have a closer look. So first things first, I think we should open this Hornby D16. Now this, um, this, uh, as you know, you're modelling the Trent Valley Railway. Now, 
This locomotive did used to, or this class of locomotive used to run essentially on the Trent Valley line that I'm uh, modelling in the period. Um, this locomotive uh, used to be used on essentially the, the slow passenger services. Um, so it used to stop at these stations that actually occur. So this uh, generally wasn't found on the main express lines, uh, although it could. Um, it was more commonly seen more around essentially the, uh, the slow passengers stopping at the train stations as we go. So obviously we've got a nice selection of details there to be fitted from pipes and, uh, and uh, rotting. And that, uh, this locomotive here looks very, very nice. Get this out. I get a bit nervous when I get the models out for the first time. Um, given the amount of detail on them, you get it, I get a little bit nervous and I'm going to bend something, particularly all the rails and the, the details that some of these things actually have. So, um, so there we go. So this is a, uh, a D16, and to be honest, she's a beautiful locomotive. So if we get the camera a bit more close and have a closer look here. So it's a, it's a um, 440. Uh, locomotive and uh, slightly weathered. So looking at that there, you can see uh, it is a very nice uh, model. And I'll just quickly get, all, get rid of some of this junk out of the way, which is a bit surprising considering the state of the rest of the, uh, the train room is. So I'll hide that away. Now I will fit a decoder on this and get this uh, running and uh, and see how it is. So looking at that uh, model there, she is a very nice, very nice model. And uh, it does have some exquisite uh, cab detailing as well. Um, yeah, we're not going to be able to really see that given that it's in uh, the shadow there, but um, if I can get that, get the light in there a little bit, you can sort of make out some of the detailing in there. There we are. So some nice uh, detailing there. Obviously will look great once there's some drivers in it, as with all my other trains, if I get uh, some more Model U figures, I'll paint them up and get them fitted in. So, uh, here we are. So looking at that, that is a very nice, very nice model. Very happy with that. I think I might uh, switch her over to the, uh, the other rails here. Just slide that back. Here we are, look at that. Very nice model, something that'll be uh, get a lot of good use, I reckon. So um, very nice, and uh, as you can see along here, I'll take the uh, get the camera a bit more closer. Bring that back. I've got some nice rails fitted uh, wire essentially around the top part here. Uh, I've got the running number on the front, of course, being uh, the BR period that it is. But um, that is a uh, nice looking model. Something I'll be uh, very happy to have run on the layout, I think. Yeah. So the other thing that uh, that we got, as shown before, is this Call of Goods by Buckman. Now, this is a second-hand model, as uh, as I mentioned, and uh, was listed on Hattons as like new. Um, so uh, I've naturally uh, ended up grabbing it, and um, I'm very, very happy looking at that already. So that, uh, that does look new to me. Um, let's have a close look. So we do have some minor details there as well, not fitted, so... That's a good. Uh, that's a good start. We do have obviously the uh, the piping and other various bits and pieces. So we'll pop this out. Oh, that's interesting. It's in two parts. So, wow. That's uh, not often. This is what just came out. The coal load. But not often. I mean, call me uh, a bit of a newbie, but uh, first time I've ever seen these cast out of actual metal. They're normally plastic. So uh, it slid out of the uh, the coal tender here. Um, which, uh, as you can see there, now there's nothing in it, which uh, could be good. I might even leave this out and then just fit my coal directly into this uh, instead. But um, it's, it's, to be honest, I'm quite surprised that um, you know, that's just sitting in there like that. So um, I'll leave it in there for now, of course. Um, so I'll get rid of this. Now this is... Uh, I've still got to attach the tinder to the actual locomotive itself. There it is there. Quite a lovely looking uh, model. It is black as well, of course, so she does need a little bit of uh, weathering, of course, 
but um, she's in very good, very good condition by the looks of it. So um, it's a nice uh, irons and oh, let's face it, just a lot of nice looking detail there. Um, very nice. So looking forward to seeing how this runs and uh, see what we'll be able to see is if there's any cab detail and just the mold, typical molded cab detail in there. Nothing uh, superb, but uh, certainly something that can be look, enhanced a little bit with a paintbrush. Um, so we'll get those uh, a bit of a go. So I think what I should do is uh, give this a bit of a run um, and uh, obviously give the D16 a bit of a run and take a look at uh, how they actually go. But first we'll get some of the coal wag. Here's uh, the brake van that I actually got, which is a, uh, a BRXLNER uh, brake van, um, which you can see here, which, you know, got a lot, lot of nice detail with essentially, oops, uh, got um, some nice um, handrails and various detail added, uh, some very clear decals. Um, obviously looking at the, uh, the panels, or the slats uh, from the timber, that, uh, that'll look great once I've had a bit of weathering, it'll bring out that detail more. Uh, Inside, uh, we've got some nice looking uh, detail around the actual window. Sorry, me, uh, it's moving on me. So, you know, just down in there as well. Um, so, you know, it looks really quite good. I'm uh, really impressed with this uh, this brake van. It'll look quite good on the, uh, essentially the end of the, the coal train itself. So, as, uh, as I mentioned before, there's the pack of uh, five of those Leamington Prior gas company wagons. Just over further there. Take that out of the way so I can focus there. So, Five of those and a weathered uh, Fulton coal wagon. So these uh, these five here obviously need to be weathered and have some coal added um, just to dirty them up a bit, of course. Uh, so in the meantime, I'll uh, hook them up to my uh, freight train, I think, and uh, get them running around. But uh, at the same time, I think I'll get the uh, coloured goods uh, actually pulling them. But first, I need to fit a DCC. Okay, here we are. Uh, with essentially uh, the D16 on the layout. And um, we're now gonna give her a run. Now I have run it in, um, had a good check over and everything else. The <laughs> I did waste a lot of time fitting the decoder in this uh, because I'm using uh, decoders that I've bought um, in the past uh, from older locomotives as I sort off a lot of my uh, older fleet. I took the decoders out but didn't think to actually reset them. So obviously, factory fin uh, fitted ones or brand new um, decoders they're all set to uh, you know uh, number n number three uh, so <laughs> considering this was used in another locomotive I had to spend a lot of time guessing what the number used to be called um, so in hindsight I think uh, I should have reset it uh, to make my life a lot easier um, so but anyway it's all sorted now for this one uh, so we'll give her a, a go and um, yeah, see how she goes. Now I've just got her pulling uh, just some collet coaches behind here uh, on essentially the slow uh, line down um, as she normally would have been seen.
Okay, so there we are. There's the uh, the coloured goods now with a uh, chip fitted to her. And now on the layout, um, and I've got her pulling essentially the coal train that I've uh, been slowly making up over time. Uh, so this has got a uh, a bit more of an older um, motor inside it. However, it does run very good. Uh, so despite it being an older motor, um, I think it's essentially an older model in general. Um, it's, uh, it does run it very, very well. Uh, so when I first saw the motor, I was a bit, oh, here we go. Uh, but uh, no, she runs quite well. I do have a Zemo chip fitted right inside here. Um, and uh, a bit of a tight squeeze, but uh, managed to get it in there, thankfully. Uh, very little room if you wanted to get a... Um, stay alive in there so you might uh, might have to look at doing something for the tender if I wish to fit one uh, but otherwise I think it's uh, it's quite good but uh, anyway we'll uh, we'll give her a run um, and uh, see how she actually goes
So there we have it guys, that's uh, this monthly mailbox wrap up. So obviously the uh, the Hornby uh, locomotive there, the D16, I'm uh, quite happy with and uh, indeed my uh, second hand uh, purchase of the Collet goods, uh, both running very, very nicely, uh, fit in very well into this lane and will get an awful lot of use. So um, so there we go. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Thank you for watching. And uh, and of course, if you're uh, new to the uh, channel itself uh, and you haven't subscribed, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, give the video a thumbs up as well, just so I know that you are enjoying these things. And uh, of course, feel free to leave comments down below. I do reply to all your comments. And uh, yeah, we will be back soon with another update or another video hopefully soon. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Take care. Bye for now.